Welcome back to WTOP's Beer of the Week. We are joined as always by Greg Angert, Beer Director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group of Food and Wine Sommelier of the Year. The group includes uh, Columbia Firehouse in Old Town, also Evening Star Cafe and right next door Planet Wine in the Del Rey neighborhood. Greg, always good to see you. See you too, bud. What's on tap this week? So this week uh, we are going to go with a, um, a, a new beer to us in the States. Cool. Uh, but, uh, of an ancient style, so to speak. Uh, this is uh, De Troque, uh Oude Goose, or Oud Goose. Um, it is a Lambic style beer from uh, the Payotin land, which is the region that surrounds, the, the rural um, country region that surrounds uh, Brussels in Belgium. It's where we find uh, all the spontaneously fermented uh, Lambic beers uh, hailing from. And uh, the reason I wanted to taste this one is because De Troque, traditionally, um, you know, in America, has been associated with sweet, kind of weird fruit lambics. Uh, you know how there's two basic families of lambic. I think most people first uh, years ago got introduced to lambic by way of framboise, uh, mm -hmm. but sweetened framboise. Right. So Lindemann's framboise, which is tastes like kind of like fruit juice, um, rather than the traditional authentic stuff that's bone dry, really sour, excellently funky. Um, and so Detroit and, and Lindemann's were known more for those kind of sweetened um, new, you know, modern lambics, but all along the way, they always were producing the funky stuff. And so now with this boom and in sour interest, a lot of the um, brewers that have been more successful with the commercial sweet stuff are starting to release a portion of their um, kind of authentic lambic unadulterated. Okay. And so this is the first time to has sent over Eau de Goose. So when you see cool. uh, Oda, that should be an indication that you're getting the more classic, the funky, uh, the acidic, dry stuff like you'd find from Cantillon or Dre Fontaine and Tilken, Decam, and people like that. So it's just kind of cool to see uh, a brewer known for making banana lambic, which I'm not making that up, do something that's more classic. Excellent. Uh. At the same time, though, I think you'll see, even from the nose, you'll see that it's not that it's not as aggressive, it's cleaner. There's a little hint of that barnyard funk we associate with Britannomyces and wild yeast, mm -hmm. but nothing like super funky. Right. It's got a little bit of a lemony note. Mm. And oh. it's dry. It's tart very in the dry, palate. Very dry. I but like that. Not really earthy or really steely or really um, grapefruity or anything like that. It's still kind of a cleaner um, approach to it. So I would say about this is it's dry, it's sour, it's mildly funky, but it's a great one to kind of get people interested in old school yes. Lambic and in the, in the real stuff. And, and really cool that Detroit is, is doing this now um, after all these years. I've said it a lot of times before. It, I mean, I, I think this would be a great one to start out with if you're Absolutely. not familiar with Lambics. and. We've talked before about how you balance uh, the bitterness in certain types of beer. How do they balance the tartness uh, or in, in, a, in beer like this? Well, I think one of the, one of the ways that they do that, first of all, so this is all spontaneous, right? So they, 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 they mash in a very simple recipe that's, um, you know, malted barley, but also a lot of unmalted wheat. Um, and then uh, they, they boil it for a long period of time, kind of creates more starch and richness. Uh, they add old hops because they don't want it to be bitter. They just want to fight off certain infections, you know. And then after some boiling, rather than running it through a heat exchanger where it will cool off quickly, they leave it in a cool ship, which we have one at Blue Jacket. Mm -hmm. Leave it out overnight. Ask about the cool ship. Yeah, so uh, we leave it out overnight, and the, the, the wort um, naturally cools down. But also all the airborne wild yeast and bacteria in the, in the, in the vicinity are going to jump in looking for sugar to consume, and so you get this spontaneous inoculation. After that, it goes into a barrel where it'll rest for one, two, three plus years, um, and a lot of it has to do with blending in the end. Once it's in barrel, the interesting thing is there's, there's just standard beer yeast around. That'll start fermenting first, so it'll get fruity and spicy. Almost tastes like Hefeweizen after like a few months. Uh, Banani, uh, spice, clove. Then comes the bacterial phase, and that's where lactobacillus or pediococcus will create lactic acid. And this is to your question. Lactic acid's clean, it's refreshing, it's what you find in yogurt and pickles. Um, it's balanced. Um, then later comes in the wild yeast, the Britannomyces, that can chew through that starchy richness, that unmalted wheat, and that's where you get the funk. So it gets funkier over time and drier. 
Now, the point I'm making about the balance acidity here is if oxygen gets into this at any point while it's aging, um, or if acetobacter gets in there, this is the bacteria that makes vinegar, acetic acid. Right, right, then right you'll yeah. start to get more of an imbalance and it'll start to taste like, well, like vinegar rather than like a delicate, refreshingly tart uh, beer. So one way is to keep the oxygen out so acetobacter can't work. The other way is frankly is to blend. You blend, so some barrels are gonna get really tannic, others will be really funky, others will be super sour. So you make a blend at the end to control all of that. And in the case of goose, it's a blend of, of young uh, and older lambic. Um, I, would, I, would, I would imagine though for Detroit, they're using you know, um, some, some young lambic and probably lambic that's only about a year, a year and a half old. So that's why it's cleaner. But the older the lambic is you blend into goose, the more funky and sour it becomes. What would you pair this with? So I think, you know, Lambic is, is traditionally a great accompaniment to, uh, in Belgium, to shellfish, you know, mussels cooked with goose is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Get that balance of brine and acidity and some sweetness from the, the bivalve itself. Oysters, clams of all kinds, and then also great with like rich meats, rillettes, terrines, pâtés, uh, hams, sausages, uh, all that works. In this case, since it's a little bit milder, I think you can do it with, uh, you know, even things that aren't quite as intense. So normally you'd say like for this, you do only like an oily fish, like bluefish or mackerel, sardine, because it's so sour. With a lightness here, you can go milder. You can do just a simple halibut that's been, you know, just mild, pan fried. Mild fish, yeah. I think it'd be great with, uh, with that actually. All right. Uh, the, the sun is starting to encroach on Greg, and it's also a little known fact, in addition to being a, a renowned beer expert, he's a vampire. So we're gonna have to push the- uh, <laughs> That's actually true. We're gonna have to push the table back. Greg, thank you as thank always. You. I'm not going to be a comedy writer on a show anytime soon. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.